Hello folks! Today we are going to be looking at another interesting link in the chain of mechanical calculators. How did we go from this, the original Ordner, a pioneer device in its own right, coming first, no revolution carry, no back transfer, nothing but a crank and a stepped carriage, to this, the Heyman Automat S, a fully automatic machine capable of doing multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, much like the calculator in your phone, all using gears, cams, levers, and a big electric motor. Between the two, there were many intermediate steps, automatic division, electrically powered machines, and this was all put together in a simple, lightweight, only 5 kilos or 11 pounds, at Brunswiger Maschinenwerke in Braunschweig, Germany. You may have heard of this city as Brunswick in English. The device was advertised as the Iron Brain. It had quite some novel features. A setting indicator that showed exactly what number you had input, semi-automatic division, electric clearing, and all in quite a small form factor. Let's have a look at it, shall we? This is the Brunsviga 11E, an electromechanical calculator from the early era before we had the fully automatic machines. This one had the plus and minus, which would correspond to the different directions in which you could turn the crank had a step reverse button and automatic clearing plus different features such as addition where you would simply set the number and you'd hit plus and it would automatically clear itself. Interestingly enough for the Brunsviga it has a series of slots here where it actually shows the set number in the calculator. And it corresponds to the 6 position, so if I turn the lever down to 6, the correct digit shows up in the series. Quite neat. Addition is, well, quite normal really. Nothing much to say about it. Addition, subtraction. One of the interesting features is that the multiplication on this is completely semi-automatic or I wouldn't even dare to go so far as to call it automatic. It is quite simply manual but of course electrically assisted. For instance, let's say that I want to figure out the number of Fahrenheit. Right now we have minus 6 degrees outside. So I would take the number 6 and I would multiply this with 1.8. Multiplication um, decimals means that you have to take the amount of decimals in the multiplier which is going to be 1.8 and you're going to take the number of decimals in the multiplicand which is none in this case since we're just doing an integer 6. So I manually step the carriage once to the right. I have the lever set to multiplication which means the input register isn't going to clear on its own. And I am going to push the plus button once. Then I will press the step button to step the carriage and then I'll hold down the plus button until we reach the desired target. And then stop. And we see that we reach 10.8, so that is minus 10.8. So in order to calculate the correct value in Fahrenheit, I need to take minus 10.8, which should be the complement number. 10.8 like so, and I will subtract twice, and to this number 
I will add 32 as the formula to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit is multiply the Celsius by 1.8 then add 32 which gives us 21.2 degrees Fahrenheit so quite a chilly day but that's the Swedish winter for you and I press the clearing buttons to reset the revolution register and the accumulator. Another thing is that this machine is a bit of an intermediary between the, I would say it's an intermediary between the Heyman Manus R and a more automatic calculator, such as the Fawcett ESA that I have shown on my calculator, on my calculator, my goodness, my channel previously. That Fawcett ESA had an issue with a blown capacitor, which means that uh, it would no longer run, but I have managed to hand it off to an expert who is an electrician and therefore dares to work with mains voltage, unlike me, because I like being alive and well, and with my electricity skills, that cannot be guaranteed. So, for a division on this machine, it's quite interesting, because much like the Bond context, you enter the dividend, really, just like any machine with division. And since you have to pull the carriage all the way out to the right, you have to ignore this first digit, so you can only have six digits in your dividend. That is not strictly true, I suppose, that you could always have the carriage shifted one and then input it. Yes, let's do it this way, it seems way more sensible. And then addition, shift one, and we see that we have three integers, or three digits in the integer. We clear this register, or the revolution register, because otherwise we will get a miscount on the division. We set the divisor. 113 to divide 355 with 113. And then I will need to change the zoom a little bit since the digits are quite dark. But allow me to show you the start of the division. I simply set it to divide and I press minus. And as you can see, it figures out the first digit, the integer component of pi and then it stops. So what I must do is to press minus again to get the next digit, and then it steps automatically. So it's some sort of intermediary between the Heyman Manus and something similar, because for the Heyman Manus, you would just keep cranking until the number is complete. Uh, with this one, you have to press minus, and let me show you how that turns out. So we continue our division. And we arrive at 3.14159 with a six decimal precision as this counter register only has seven digits. Now, since this counter register supports a different tens or it supports tens carry we can actually perform shortcut multiplication now let's say i want to figure out the number of seconds in a year i would of course start by 60 squared to find out the number of seconds in an hour and the way i would do this is to shift the carriage thrice I would multiply it by 100, step, and subtract by 4 to get 60, and we see 3600. Now 3600 times 24, a back transfer feature is 
very important. So 3600 times 24, shift the carriage, and we see the little indicator of the numeral position shift, inverse to how the carriage moves, which I personally find to be rather quite of a neat feature. There's something just simply visually pleasing about it. But enough yammering on. 20, 24 gives us 86,400. So 86,400 times 365. So Four hundred minus four, three hundred sixty plus five gives us with decimal indicators or thousand separators rather thirty one million five hundred and thirty six thousand, and that is the number of seconds in a year. Now I was listening to a gentleman talk about his experiences with um, winning an Olympic silver. And he said in his life he had spent 45 million seconds preparing for a race that took 15 seconds to complete. Now, with that in mind, 45 million seconds if we look at it as a number, we see. So if I had a bigger buffer calculator, maybe this would actually be simpler to do. But 45 million. So there and there. Let's see, so I get the decimals right. 1,000, 100,000, million. So, 45 million. So that is 11, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 integer, integers. And I want to divide this by 60 to figure out the number of minutes spent, just so that we get a somewhat neater number to work on. Actually, let's subtract it by 36,000 to get the number of uh, hours spent, which is an even more neat number. So we see that we have four here. This means that the number of hours, in order for us to place the decimal, we take 8 plus 1, 9 minus 4. Therefore, our decimal position in the revolution register becomes well, five integers, so m four three four fem, and just the single one remaining. With that in mind, we clear the revolution register and we start the division. It actually came out even. This gentleman spent 12,500 hours applying his trade in order to be ready for the Olympic silver. Now, this goes quite well in hand with the old saying that it takes 10,000 hours for you to master something. So I would say that this gentleman had his numbers in order. I approve. On that note, I think that about covers the various possibilities of the Brunsviga, also known as the Iron Brain. So on that note, I would like to thank you all for watching. As always, please feel free to leave comments. I do read every single one of them and it's always a joyous occasion when I get to read a new one. So thank you all so much for subscribing, your continued support, and all of your delightful comments. They are truly appreciated. Hope you have a brilliant day. Thank you.